So we're going to get into image acquisition. So this is the time where we start to talk about the camera, what we're doing in the camera, what's happening in the camera, and how we can make a better pixel coming out of the camera, and all of that good stuff. Um, so uh, coming to us to talk about uh, grading and photorealistic style transfer uh, is uh, it's our uh, Zabetta from the University of Pompefrabra, and uh, Marcelo Bartolomeo is her um, advisor. So it's our. Okay, thank you, Renard, for your introduction. Um, I'm going to present the work we are doing about video style transfer in the image processing for enhanced cinematography group, uh, along with my supervisor, Marcelo Bertalmio. So, first, I want to remark the importance of color in cinema, and I want to show this video. Basically, it's a fragment of a documentary called Painting with Pixels, which talks about the color grading in the Cohen's brother, oh brother uh, movie, Oh Brother, Where Are Thou? So this movie was shot in spring, and the landscape was uh, green and lively, but the directors wanted to, to transmit some dry and tough landscape and feeling, so they did that by modifying the color of the movie. And this movie was one of the first movies which was uh, fully digitally color graded. So <clears throat> color is very important in cinema because uh, it's associated with feelings and it's a tool that cinematograph cinematographers have. Um, it's one more tool and because of that, this motivates our work. So from a more technical point of view, the modification of color in cinema is done in three stages, basically in pre-production, on set, and post-production. In pre-production, we have the LATs, which are a, a 3D matrix, which has some color information. Basically, it tells you where each color has to go, and this is the diagram we see there. And then uh, the LATs are passed to the onset stage, and there the color decision lists are created by the director of photography along with the director. And this all is finally passed to the post-production stage, where the final color grading for the movie is done. And the LATs and the CDL is used as a starting point for the colorist to do the color grading. So <clears throat> the CDLs and LATs, they are very useful because they allow the visualization of the information that the camera is recording. Um, it also can include aesthetic choices of the director of photography or the director of the movie. But the thing, <clears throat> uh, it requires a lot of uh, manual work. It has to be in it has to be done by experts, and it takes a lot of time. So that motivates our work. So what we want to do is we want to propose a, an automatic tool that if you have a reference image, it transfers the style from the reference image to your footage. So the advantages of this uh, is that it's fully automatic, and it can save a lot of time and a lot of work. So before starting explaining our method, I will do a recopilation of uh, related work, and I'll explain what is a style transfer. There is extensive uh, work in the academic literature, and I will show these examples done with uh, CNNs and neural networks. So here is very clear what style transfer is. So we have an original image here on the right. And here we can see how having a reference image on the left, the style is, tr is transferred to the original image. And we get this result. So this was uh, by Gatis in 2016. And we can see that the reference, if the reference image changes, 
we can get very different results. So these were um, different results with different reference images. But all the reference images were paintings. So this work was adapted to be photorealistic and some, uh, let me, yeah. So if this is the original image on the right, then the reference image is a photography and the result is supposed to be also photorealistic. We have some examples there which are impressive. But <laughs> sometimes they show some artistic uh, artifacts and because of that, we want our method to be fully re uh, photorealistic, so this is slightly different from what we need. Some of these works have been adapted to video also, so we have the original on the top left and the example down and the result on the top right. But we will, we will, we are, uh, we will follow the line of the statistical based color transfer approaches. This example here is from Reinhardt's work in 2001 and it uses the statistical properties of the reference and the original image to get the final result. It does by transferring the mean and the standard deviation of the, of the reference image to the source original image. So, Okay, our work, our work consists of transferring the style of a reference image to a source video. But before explaining this method, I will explain our previous work, which we have a reference image and a still original, one single original image. And then I'll explain how we extend that to video. So, first of all, what we understand as style is three characteristics of images, which are luminance, uh, color, and contrast. So because of that, our method will have three stages, the luminance transfer, the color transfer, and the contrast transfer. So <clears throat> for the luminance transfer, uh, we will use a tone mapping algorithm well, it has been explained what is a tone mapping in this conference, but I will do a little uh, summarize. So um, our orig original image is a raw image, so it's the information that the camera is capturing. That has a wider uh, dynamic range that the displays where it will be shown, so that, information's need to be, that information needs to be fit to the display. And for that, we use a tone mapping algorithm. So we will use a CDAC tone mapping algorithm, which has two main characteristics. It works as the, as the human visual perception, and it performs a, a constrained histogram equal, equalization. We can see here on the diagram. So this is the original image histogram, luminance histogram. And this is the gamma which is applied to the uh, original image and the hi resulting histogram will be a more, much more equalized histogram. So basically we can see here the formula. This is a, it's a gamma, an exponent gamma which, which depends on each pixel value. But, well, yeah. So, but we don't want to perform a, a histogram equalization. We want the source luminance distribution to be similar to the reference luminance distribution. And that, um, that will do by this formula. Where this formula comes from? So basically we apply, we apply the tone mapping algorithm that I just explained to the a linearized reference image, because our reference image is not linear, we need to linearize it, and by applying the tone mapping, we'll get a, a, a constrained histogram, equalized histogram, and we also apply the tone mapping to our source image, 
So both of them will have a, a constraint histogram, luminance histogram, and we can assume that they are the same. So forgetting the luminance of the reference, we'll just have to apply the inverse, we'll have to apply to the source the inverse of these two functions, which is basically what is written in this formula here. We have the source image top mapped, and then we apply the inverse of this and the inverse of the inverse of the gamma correction, so that is the gamma correction. And with this formula, we'll get the S1, which is basically the result of our luminance transfer step. So to see how this looks, the results of this, on the left, we have the original raw image. And on the right, we have the reference. So after doing the luminance transfer step, we get this result, which has a luminance distribution more similar to the reference image. Okay. So after this, we'll go to the color transfer step. In this step, as I said, we follow a statistical-based uh, approach. So we'll study the principal component, uh, we'll do the principal component analysis of both the source and the reference images. What is a principal component analysis? Is to find the main axis of the color distribution of each image. So here, wait, sorry. So here, this is the reference image which has this axis and this mean. We have the source here, and after doing the transformation, we can see that the mean of the source image is moved to the mean of the reference image going here, and also the standard deviations along each axis of the PCA is, um, is stretched or reduced to have the same standard deviation as the reference. There is one small difference from the classical statistical PCA approaches, which is that we will apply this only to the second and third axis, because on the, third, on the first axis, the luminance information is kept, and we don't want to modify that, because we modify the luminance in the first and third steps of our method. So, yeah, to see the results. Ah, so basically, this um, transformation is done with a matrix multiplication, each pixel of the original image is multiply, multiplied by a four by four matrix, and we get the resulting image from the color transfer step, which it will be S2. Here on the left, we have the resulting image from the previous luminant transfer step, and here on the right, we have the reference, and after the color is transferred, we get this result on the left. On the left. Yeah, and the last step of our method is to transfer the contrast of the reference to the source. So we want to transfer the local contrast, so I'll give a definition of local contrast. If we see here in the diagram, the black line, sorry, the black line is showing the pixel intensity. So the local mean is on red, is here, this line in red. So basically, the local contrast is the difference between the, between the pixel intensity and the local mean, which is shown here in blue, is this difference, this distance. So for instance, if we want to double the local, con the local contrast, uh, we just have to double this distance here, and it's here in the diagram is showing dotted line. So. Once we have a definition of local contrast, I show the formula of how we transfer the local contrast of the reference to the source. So basically, this formula here, what it's doing, is matching the standard deviation of the local contrast of the reference to the source. So here is the local contrast of the reference, and with this term here, we are just matching the standard deviations. So here we have the result from the color transfer step. We have the reference on the right. And this will be after applying the contrast, the local contrast transfer. This is the resulting image of our method. So yeah. Now I'm going to explain how we adapt 
this method, which basically was for transferring from one image to another image. Now we want to transfer from a reference image to a video, to a sequence of images. So this is done like this. So we have this, our, our image sequence, our video. So we take the first frame of the video and we'll calculate the transformations. That is the luminance function that we'll apply to the, and all this is calculated for the first frame. We'll, sorry, we'll calculate the luminance transformation for the first frame. We'll calculate the matrix that will do the color transfer, and we'll calculate the factor which uh, transfers the local contrast. And, then, and that is applied to all the frames in the video. So what are the advantages of this? Well, we won't get flickering effects because the same functions are applied from the first frame of the video to the last one. So the flickering effect is because of having different functions applied to each frame, and as they are all the same, we won't get that artifact. And also, uh, it will be a low computational method because we do the calculations only once and not to each frame of the video. So, okay, now I'm going to show some results for still images and also for videos. This is for a single frame. So this is our original image. It has been gamma corrected because otherwise it was very dark, so for visualization. And here on the right, we have the reference image, and this is the resulting image on the right. With different references, we get different results. Yeah. And these are the results for video. So this will be one of the source videos. On the left, we have the reference image and the different results. Yeah. This is another source video. This is the original video, which is quite dark. And with a purple reference, we get this result. It's the colors are quite different from the original. And I think this is the last example. This is the original video. And with this blue reference, we get this result. So as a conclusion, conclusion uh, we have presented an automatic method that takes a reference and it transfers the style to the source footage or the source, source uh, image. And it's free of artifacts. And I say that uh, there is no flickering artifacts and the results are photorealistic. And uh, another advantage is, is that uh, it's low computational because each a transformation is a low computational transformation that is for the luminance we have to apply a gamma an exponent gamma for the color transfer we have to do a PCA analysis and a matrix multiplication and for the um, local contrast we have to multiply the local contrast by a factor so each step is quite low computation it has low computational cost so Okay, the limitations or future work of our approach is we want to have some control over skin tones, and I can show an example that summarizes the limitations of our method. So here we can see that the skin tone doesn't look very realistic. Another limitation is the selection of the reference image. So here we can see that the content of the reference and the original is quite different. We have this source, light source purple here, which is kind of affecting the result. And we can see that everything is purple and also the jacket shows some artifacts. So yeah, I think this is a, a, an example of the limitations. And another limitation is the selection of the frame we 
choose for calculating the functions of the style transfer. If the first frame of the video is representative of the rest of the video, then the results are quite okay. But if it is not, if it's different from the rest of the frames, then the results are not optimal. It can be improved. So, yeah, I think that's all. And if you have any questions, I'm open for questions. Thank you. I guess, what would a presentation be without a question? <laughs> um, Bill Feiner with Colorfront. So as long as my voice holds up. Um, one question, uh, I understand what you're doing. Um, the uh, analysis is, is performed, uh, as you said, in a linear light. You've taken the gamma out. <clears throat> but in what kind of a color space are you doing this in, in this work? Uh, we are using RGB. Color RGB, space. so the primaries would be traditional video primaries, at least at this point. Uh, sorry, what? They, they would be like video primaries. In other words, uh, if you're saying RGB space, uh, it would be like uh, uh, sRGB or yes, something. Yes, yeah, yes. Okay, Standard that was my question, RGB. yeah. Yes, okay. we tried also in IPT color space, but okay. the PCA was not a, was better in RGB, so we decided to stick to yeah. RGB. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and when you're trying to analyze your subsequent sequence, you're, you're, with your methodology, have you tried picking other frames or, mm. or uh, taking a mean of uh, different analysis throughout the thing? Uh, has that impacted it any? Uh, for the video transfer, yeah. no, you mm. mean? Um, yeah, we have tried, for instance, in a video which has a very dark sequence and then a very light or there is a highlight or something, if we choose the frame with the highlight and we apply those transformations for the rest of the video, yeah. uh, there are some clipping artifacts or mm. the, res the result is not the optimal one. Yeah. So I think we can go further with that, with the selection mm. of the frame for calculating <coughs> the transformations. We can do something uh -huh. about it. Um, and then, in, interesting enough, at the beginning you were showing uh, ge geometric distortions based on a uh, reference image. Um, yeah. Ah, okay. W w with the CNN? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. That, that's another work outside of the scope of this one. Yes. Okay, yes. very yeah. good. That's also interesting. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please tap the like button and also subscribe to our channel to receive notifications when we add new content. For more information about us, please visit simti.org. We'll see you next time.